Now, I'm sure the love affair that he was referring to is perhaps Rico's Twitter. I think if Chris Sims is checking in on Rico's Twitter, then he might understand where the love affair for Brees Hall is coming yeah. from. But I don't take uh, I don't take lightly what Chris Sims has to say. I think he is very tapped in. He knows his stuff. And uh, for those coming in here, sorry about that. If you're saying that the audio, uh, you couldn't hear it that well. It was a very quick clip. Chris Sims basically just said he's hearing through the grapevine that the Bills have a love affair with Brees Hall. Yeah. So, in other words, saying the Bills are interested in Brees Hall, according to the sources that Chris Sims has. And that is something that we have been wondering uh, for a while here, Rev. What right. would the Bills be with a true running back one? Somebody they invested in, somebody that they went out and got in order to solidify the position you know Devin Singletary it's been fine Zach Moss I think we know what we're getting out of him as of now right but Devin Singletary you know he's not elite he's not a scrub and he you know at this point I think we also know what we're getting out of him a lot better towards the end of the year last year than it was in the beginning of the year but it's still not a running game that most people fear mm -hmm. and it's not that you necessarily have to have a run game that is you know, the equivalent of Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara, but with Josh Allen, if you can have an above average run game, it immediately elevates this offense to a whole new level. Your thoughts, yes. Rev, on the potential for the Bills to go running back in round one. Me personally, I just can't fathom it. I don't see it, but where do you stand on it? I actually love it. I, I do. I mean, if, 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 let's just say they, they, they decide not to trade up, okay, and they stay put at 25. You look at who would probably be the best player available and a guy that would really be an impact player on the, on the team from day one. Why not look at a guy like Brees Hall, who is the consensus top running back in this draft class? Um, and he's no scrub. I know, I know a lot of people think, you know what, never draft a running back in round one. But listen, we're not drafting a running back in, in, in the top five or the top ten. We're talking about 25, which is essentially – an early second round pick. Okay. You can get him for five years. Okay. Get the use out of him, but you have the best back in the class. This guy can add so much to our team. In fact, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was next gen stats. They had talked about the, uh, the athleticism scores of, of, of Brees Hall and, um, and his overall scores. And he had scored according to their database, I think like a 99 overall score and a 97 athletic score. And they said that that out of – Sounds pretty he, good. Very good. And they said he, he ranked four out of, out of out of the last five draft classes. Um, it was him, Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, and, um, and, and, and there's, there's somebody else that, 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 uh, that, that slipped in my mind. But there was four, and he was one of them that scored a 99 – at least a 97 overall athletic score and uh, uh, just an overall score in general. So, I mean, you're looking at the guy who he's comp to as far as athleticism is concerned and overall scores according to their database. How good is Najee Harris? Very good. Travis Etienne, well, we didn't get, his, we didn't get a chance to see him, right, because of injury. Uh, um, but we know how good he, he is. Jonathan Taylor was the other guy. Jonathan Taylor, we know how good he is. Bills Mafia, we got a first-hand glimpse of him. So if you got a guy like that who is compared to those guys from an, an overall athletic standpoint, why wouldn't you not want to have him on your team? I get it. Devin Singletary, a lot of people are, you know, are, are you know, they, they like him. They're like, well, we don't need a running back. You know, we run, we, we hardly run the ball anyway. Well, perhaps that's the problem. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm course. not saying that we need to go back to, you know, old school ground and pound, but we need to have a very effective running game. Last year, it was okay towards the end of the year, but when you break it down, it wasn't as good as it could have been. Granted, Devin Singletary ended the year with 870 yards, but Josh Allen had almost he had almost 800 yards himself. So and then on top of that, teams weren't playing them in the box. They were dropping back in coverage. So uh, you should be able to run against that. Anybody should be able to run against a light box. Now, I'm not saying Devin Singletary is garbage. I'm saying he's mediocre and he's a running back one on this team by default. But when you get a chance to improve at every position, especially this position, a guy like Brees Hall is dynamic. He can run. He's fast. Something that the Bills have always been looking for. Listen at this. Don't forget the fact that Brandon Bean was looking to upgrade that position since last year. 
they they tried to get Travis Etienne. They 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 were in on on Najee Harris, both of who went ahead of the Bills at thirty. Okay, and so and and, and even uh, uh, Brandon Bean wanted Najee Harris a year prior to that, but Najee decided to go back to college. So Bean was always looking for a dominating type of running back, and I think he settled for Motor Singletary, who's been okay. But they're always looking for upgrades. Brees Hall is a phenomenal prospect that you would like to have on this team and we lean to him in certain times to relieve the pressure from Josh Allen so he doesn't have to be Superman all the time you imagine a, a, a legit running game uh, listen Mafia not ground and pound okay but a legit effective running game and then you see teams start to oh wait 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 we have to target this guy now and so they begin to creep that safety into the box and now Josh Allen can go play action over the top and do his his damage okay but you don't want to sleep and poop on a guy like like Brees Hall just because oh we don't draft running backs in round one that guy is a phenomenal back and if you can add him to the team I think it will make this team even that much more dangerous. A phenomenal back indeed, and those are all great points. He's coming off of two straight 1,500-yard uh, years at Iowa State, averaging just under six yards a carry, 20 touchdowns plus the last two seasons. He's also pretty effective through the air. Yeah. He had over 300 yards receiving for the Cyclones a season ago. It would be great. Don't get me wrong. It would be great. You know, we're at the point now with this team where you look at it, and that's kind of the uh, the conclusion you come to. You look at all these additionals that you could add to the team in order to take a great team even further. You look to the running back position, you look to the D line position, you look to the wide receiver position. And that's what you, you know, you think when it comes to taking a team to another level, obviously when it comes to the cornerback position, it's logical in the sense that there's just not one at our disposal right Right. now to start, but yeah, when it comes to the running back position, you are 100% right. It seemed as though there was heavy interest there last year. It didn't pan out. But we've seen right. what these young running backs can come in and do. Najee Harris, a big help for Pittsburgh. Jonathan Taylor, perhaps the best back in the league, what he's yeah. done for Indianapolis. Yeah. So, you know, you see what what the outcome could potentially be. Now, I've seen some, some uh, interesting comments in the comment section that I wanted to address. One coming in from Terrence saying it's smoke and mirrors. He's thinking that what Chris Sims is saying, what he's hearing, smoke and mirrors. Do you think that that would be something the Bills would put out in order to make it seem as though they're, you know, going running back, even though they're going something else? Or do you really think running back is in play for Buffalo? I mean, anything's possible, right? Um, but my, my thing is for what? You know, like, like what team yeah. is really going to be trying to, trade up or make a move for for Brees Hall anyway you know and like I mean most of the teams are looking at it like like no we're not drafting running back in round one anyway so so why would they even they, I don't see a purpose for them to even put out any smoke for running back I can see if it was a wide receiver or a corner or something like that you know um but 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 why you know what I'm saying so no I think it's I think it's a very legitimate um uh thing you know now whether or not he leaked it or what I don't I don't know I can't say that but but I mean we know that he was interested last year this is not just a a one-time thing. I mean, he's yep. been interested in it, and it's in this legit interest. Even Chris Brown from uh, uh, the Buffalo Bills uh, uh, dot com. I mean, he's even said it. It's, it was legit interest in Travis Etienne and Najee Harris, and then they wanted Etienne, who went, uh, I think, at twenty-five um, to the uh, to the Jags last year, and 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 Bean was willing to draft him at thirty. So now they have twenty-five spot, and you've got their best running back here. And oh, by the way, don't let's not forget, Mafia, that that. Motor is in the final year of his contract. Okay. Now, I am not one to believe that that Brandon Bean is going to be willing to extend a running back or let alone extend Motor Singletary. So if that's the case, you have him on his final year, why not bring in the best back in the draft right now and have this guy uh, for four years, five, you know, at, at, at the most on his fifth year option? Um, it, it just makes it, it makes too much sense for, for me because of where there's where they're drafting and you look at the holes on the roster. They're very minimal. I know we like to blow up the cornerback position, which I know it, it can give us room for concern. Right. Uh, when you look at Tredavious White and you look at Mandane Jackson and who else? I trust that Brandon Binkett is going to bring in somebody. It doesn't have to be a guy at 25. They trust they trust Dane Jackson. 
I mean, they they really trust Dane Jackson. They would. I mean, you know, he he's played a lot of football for us, and we saw how well he did. I mean, he played so well. He they they made he made uh, a Levi Wallace expendable. Okay, so I don't necessarily think they're looking for somebody um, um, that high. They can get a developmental guy who can come in and compete and play spot duty until Trey gets back. And if he happens to be better than Dane, then so be it. When Trey gets back, then Dane goes to the bench. But I don't necessarily think they have to get a guy at 25, you know. So so I would just I would just caution ourselves to say that, I mean, it's either a cornerback at 25 or bust. No, there are guys that can go deep into three, round four, even round five that can be at value. Because think about it. All you need is somebody who's better than, than Levi Wallace on the mm-hmm. team. Right. You see what I'm saying? Another interesting comment from Terrence. Uh, you still got to pay – him uh, a first round pick contract which is unacceptable and I think that's a great point when you're talking about running back the days of first round contracts for running back are just about done I mean the you're talking about moving on from Devin Singletary's contract that'll be peanuts compared to what you'd have to pay a running back one like Brees Hall if that is who you wound up going out and getting and you wound up panning out as we know once you reach that four or five uh, five year mark as a running back History will tell you it's pretty much downhill from there. It has become the most disposable position in the league, and that's why you see eyebrows raised when anybody discusses taking a running back in the first round. But when you are a team like the Bills right now who is so solid in so many areas, there's very few weaknesses on this team, it does make sense. It does definitely make sense. Also to the point that Rev is making where you obviously know you need corner, but there are so many corners available in this draft. You might be able to find that spot filler later on. If you are really that high on Brees Hall and you're really that high on elevating this Buffalo Bills run game, then it does make sense. And also with the wide receiver situation, there's so many wide receivers in this draft too. That's another reason why I think that they might wait on that too. So yeah, the running back could make sense. The the talk about it has picked up a lot recently, it seems. It seems like that, you know, that idea of going running back in the first round has become more popular as the days are going on here. But uh, I, I got to tell you, Rev, at first I thought cornerback was inevitable. But now when we really get down to, you know, the different situations and the different approaches the bills could take here. There are a variety of them. And the more that time goes on here, the more I become un, uh, unsure exactly yeah. what they're going to do. Yeah. If, it, if it were, you know, gun to your head right now, you have a free bet. What are the bills doing at 25 in your opinion? I, I'm, I'm, I'm staying with Brees Hall. If, if they don't move, if they don't move, Brees Hall to me is, is, is their pick. I, I just, I, you know, because I mean, look at wide receiver. I mean, who who could be there at wide receiver? I mean, I know I know you like I know you like Jahan Dotson. I know that that's your guy, uh, a, a slot guy. But then you, I mean, you have Jam, uh, Jamison Crowder. You got you've got Isaiah McKenzie. Um, granted, those guys are on short term deals as well. So I mean, adding a slot guy, you know, I mean, it makes sense. Um, but man, I just think that at this point in this stage of where of where they are in their rebuild and and what they can add that can bump this offense and his team to the next level a guy like Brees Hall is 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 to me that's that's the guy and even if we're talking about contracts look we don't have I'm not saying that the, that the Bills are gonna you know pay him first round contract at the end of his contract no 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 they they, they can they can use him for four years yeah you're talking get about of, getting a elite yeah, running back talent in this window yeah that makes sense for, for, for four years right because let's, let's let's look at the contracts here I, I pulled up a couple of guys let's look at at uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, right? Okay, he he was drafted what, thirty uh, second overall, right? In in twenty twenty, his contract that he signed was a four year ten million ten million dollar deal, okay, uh, eight mil guaranteed at signing. So people are like, well, man, man, rev, that, that's, a, that's a lot of money. Four years, I mean, you're paying what? That's what, you know, a little over two million per year. Now you can backload a lot of that, and then that's fine. So, but you but you get an elite running back for two three mil a year at the most. Come oh, on, now. I mean, why why wouldn't you? And then you get rid of him. Right. After four years, you don't even have to uh, give them a fifth year option. We can just keep on recycling these running backs. But why not get the best one? You know, why would why, why are we just so 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 content with just settling for just any old guy in round three, round four who's mediocre when you can get the best guy, especially if you get a guy like, let's just say, um, uh, James Cook. or uh, OK, from uh, uh, Dalvin Cook's br- brother. Round four. Are you going to pay him after four years? No, likely not. So so why not? So why are you waste? Why would you waste that guy who who can't do what Brees Hall can do? 
and, and, and just get Brees. You might as well just get Brees Hall. Get the best guy. Okay, it, it's affordable. You can afford the contract. It's not going to break your leg. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. mean, we're talking about $10 million for four years, likely. Okay, maybe even less. Get him for four years, and at the end of the four years, get get rid of him. And, yeah, I mean, that point you bring up makes yeah. sense, too, because a lot of these guys are on borrowed time here. I mean, the, the, a lot yes. of the guys we just went out and got. You don't, There's no way Von Miller plays the extent of that full contract. Um, a variety of guys currently that are just in place – on this team for the Super Bowl window that they're currently in. This Bills team, by the time that they would have to re-sign Brees Hall to a new contract, this team will look considerably different, obviously. Right. That's just the right. way the league runs. But, you know, as you said, Roger Saffold, short-term deal, Crowder, mm -hmm. short-term deal, obviously Von Miller. So, yeah, I guess when you look at it like that, it, it does make a lot of sense. John DeMarkey seeming like he is all in on the uh, – Bryce Hall train. He says Jonathan Taylor ran all over Buffalo. Yeah, he did. You ain't kidding, man. That was a that was a nightmare. Buffalo yeah. allowed 184 yards and five touchdowns to Jonathan Taylor. Travis Henry, uh, let's see. Right or is there. he is he talking about combined? Uh, whatever. Either way, we've seen yeah. Travis or Derrick Henry mm -hmm. uh run all over the Bills as well. We've seen right. what good Absolutely. running back talent yes. does to the Bills. Yes. Uh, and John's basically saying we need that guy uh, twice in Kansas City. Uh, you know, you punt. Uh, John, I love you, man. Yeah. I, I, I just like reading Morse code here. I'm trying to figure out exactly <laughs> what. I, <laughs> twice in KC. Yeah, let me yeah. take it from the top. Let me take it from the top. Go, go for it. Jonathan Taylor ran over Buff 184, 184 yards, five TDs in Buffalo. I'm not sure if you're alluding to Travis Henry here, but um, I, don't, I, I, I don't know. I would assume Derrick Henry. Mm -hmm. I would assume Derrick Henry as well because he yeah. has indeed ran over a few times uh but John, he's saying that guy twice in the kansas city game buffalo punts uh that, that and then you can't really you can't punt against uh kansas city right. i mean obviously right. and i guess if you have an elevated run game that that definitely lessens your chances of having to punt in short down situation uh john's also saying that josh can't take all these hits we can't. know this i mean it, Josh Allen cannot be the leading rusher on this team year in and year out. It, actually, we, we've probably seen enough of that already. And as fun as it is yeah. to watch, as good as he is at it, you don't want Josh Allen looking like Ben Roethlisberger in the latter in the latter stage of his of his time in Buffalo. You just don't want that, or you want to mm -hmm. avoid it at all costs. Listen, Josh Allen's going to play that style of football whether you tell him to or not. That's what makes him great. But mm -hmm. if you can limit the amount of designed runs that puts him in that situation, I mean, we've been overwhelmingly lucky that Josh Allen has been essentially injury, you know, uh, injury proof. I don't want right, to say that, right. but the way he plays, you know, Lamar Jackson, who's half the size, missed almost the entire year last year for playing a similar style. Luckily for us, Josh Allen is built to play that way, but you can only sustain that for so yeah. long. Yeah. And as good as he is through the air, as good as he is in and out of the pocket throwing the ball, you don't want to jeopardize that because of your lack of run game and him having to supplement that too. Yeah, so it all makes right. sense. You know, the more we talk about it here, Rev, not only are you investing in the future in the run game, you're also investing in the future and Josh Allen's health and longevity. And when you put it that way, who wouldn't sign up for that? Well, I mean, one, 100%. I mean, you think about it. Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott had a front row seat in Carolina watching Cam Newton get pummeled. Okay. Oh, they, they, that's they another don't. great example right there. Cam yeah. Newton, an MVP, and then within a couple of seasons, right. he couldn't even stand. It, Could, great couldn't point. do it. Couldn't do it. Yep. Okay. Now they see Josh Allen, and every time you hear him, you hear them uh, talking about Josh Allen, you know, especially McDermott, he's like, yo, well, can you tell him to, to, to slide some more? You know, yep. maybe you can tell him, right? Yep. And so they, they understand that that's his game, but they don't want him to do that. You don't want him to have to rely right. on himself. Well, right? and, and, and to that point, right? How about Andrew Luck, who says, hey, you know what? I've, yes. I've taken enough hits to, to, to the rest of my life. I'm hanging the cleats up. I couldn't right. imagine Josh Allen doing oh that, but we gosh. can't act like we haven't seen it. You're we damn can't right. act like it. Yeah, and it's a, 200, it's a $200 million asset. They want to protect him. Why sure. do you think they added Aaron Cromer? And Aaron Cromer, former Buffalo Bills uh, offensive line coach, but he's known for having very good offensive linemen who are great in the run game. Then they add in Roger Saffold, who is a mauler, okay? And then you bring back Ryan Bates. They may even add another guy who is like an Aaron Cromer disciple to the line at some point in the draft. They're going to run the ball more. Being, I mean, Sean McDermott wanted more balance. 
and and, and I think mafia is, fans are just scared when they when they hear run the ball, run the ball. They're like, don't take the ball out of Josh Allen's hands. No, 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 no. Come on now. I, I alluded to it a, f- a few days ago about Aaron Rodgers. Consider Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Look at how they run their offense. I'm not saying the offense is going to be exactly the same, but look at him. Aaron Rodgers still throws the ball over 4,000 yards, has over 30 plus touchdowns a year. And then you had Aaron Jones, who who, who averages close to a thousand yards per season, right? And him and him and, and AJ Dillon, I mean, they they've averaged, I think, like 12 or 1300 yards in the past couple of years. You you need to have an elite running game. And, and does it mean, necessarily mean that that Josh Allen is just going to be handing the ball off all day? You know, that's that's the case. It it brings balance. It's it's like moves and counter moves. When you see a team backing off, playing, they're like, "Look, we're not going to let Diggs and, and Josh Allen defeat us deep." Okay, fine. Well, what did what did Brian Dable do? You know, all last year, and it struggled. They struggled to 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 get over the hump. They were trying to constantly throw the ball against it, and it cost us a lot of these games that we should have won. Hence, Jacksonville Jaguars game, right? All all these games, right? Well, the counter is you run the ball. They're daring you to run the ball against it. But when you can't do it and you don't have a guy who can do it successfully, that limits you offensively. But now when you couple that with an elite running back and an improved offensive line, plus you got Josh Allen, the defense is going to pick their poison. All right, are you going to stop the you going to stop the pass? Stop the pass. We're going to run the ball. If you're going to okay, you're going to bring a safety in the box to try to stop the running game, then Josh Allen's going to go over the top. We saw the Patriots do it for how many years, guys? How many years did the Patriots revamp themselves and 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 just rebrand themselves year after year after year? They 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 did whatever they had to do to win the game. If it meant relying on 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 Brady. Chunking the ball deep, fine. Then they did it. If they relied on on handing the ball off, then so be it. But it made them extremely balanced. That's what a balanced team does. A balanced offense does, and that's what it's going to do for Josh Allen. Yeah, don't be afraid of that. I don't think that we're going back to the '80s. I don't know what a lot of mafia may think when we're talking about running the ball. But man, look, it's Josh Allen's going to like, yo. Thank you. I finally got somebody that that I don't have to. You know, I can hand the ball off to it. I don't have to run it as much. Listen, I don't care if Josh Allen runs the game plan that the Patriots played in the win bowl where he throws the ball four times. I don't care if the if the game is won. Yes. You can count me in as not giving an absolute F as to how they got it done. I do not care. And if that if that winds up helping them win games, sign me up. Johnny Boy coming back in here to clarify the Morse code that he sent me earlier. He's saying, I met Derek Henry, so we were right there. <laughs> He's saying, yeah. but the point is, Josh cannot be our go-to guy on third and one and fourth and one. Get Hall. See, I disagree yes. with that. See, Josh is the go-to guy on third and one and fourth and one. That is why he is so dangerous. I love him in that situation where I don't want him to be the go-to guy. Is running eight to ten sweep, you know, sweep plays where he's taking the ball out of the gun and running down the right, right or left side of the field taking an open field hit, which we've seen him do numerous times. Yeah. You know, up up the gut on your on your standard third and fourth and one QB sneak, you want a guy like Josh Allen to run that play because there's very few quarterbacks in the league who are built the way he is and are capable of getting that yard. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see that continued, obviously. But when we're talking about the run game as a whole, where I want to see that scaled back is just seeing the endless amount of Josh Allen design run plays that all the time wind up ending in him getting hit. I mean, there's very few examples where he runs the ball and gets down clean. I mean, it's just not yeah. the way he plays. Yeah, he doesn't Cam miss Newton, foul. who you brought up. Yeah, exactly. Cam Newton, a very, very good example. I mean, Josh Allen and Cam Newton, very similar attributes in a variety of different ways. But mm-hmm. Cam Newton, listen, <laughs> it's not that he was just a, a problem, you know, in the media or a distraction, or whatever. The, the main reason that he is not what he used to be is because the talent on the field fizzled out because of injury and playing like he was a fullback when he wasn't. And that is right. obviously of top concern. Like Rev said, that's a quarter billion dollar investment and you're going to do whatever you can in order to ensure you get the most out of it and upgrading the run, the, the, the running game for the bills would be a hell of a good way to do so. Johnny, come back, uh, coming back in here and saying, uh, we are saying the same thing. We don't want Josh being hit. Allen is awesome, third and one and fourth and one. Just late season and playoffs, not all year. Absolutely. And where you really mm-hmm. want the run game to increase and be better is in those playoffs, right? Yes. Because like you mentioned, in a game like against the Chiefs, maybe you don't score within a minute and a half and give them the ball back. If you have an established right. run game, you right. can run the clock out. You can get those short downs and not have to punt. So – 
you know, the more we talk about it, yeah, and, I, and I've been saying this forever. I just want to see what this Bills offense looks like with an elite running back. I mean, yeah. what the hell does that look like? Right, right. What we've seen as of late is already as good as we've seen ever. I just can't imagine, you know, this team is missing their Thurman Thomas, right? There's very similar examples right. to the 90s team for this Bills team currently. The one piece missing is that guy. And like I said, we haven't had that guy since LaShawn McCoy could this be the year we do? Could the Bills go running back in the draft? We are just a few short days away from finding yeah, out. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? I wanted to go back to up here because I, I saw Steve Lynn. He had come in here with the comment earlier, and, he, and we were talking about uh, uh, Jonathan Taylor and, and Derrick Henry mm -hmm. being drafted, and he said they were both second-round picks. And, and, yes, absolutely, they were both yeah. second-round picks. It, it, it makes a ton of sense. But, look, Jonathan Taylor – was drafted in round two. He was he was a forty first overall pick. He was a third back taken, the third one. But he 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 got picked forty one overall. The Bills don't have the forty first pick. They don't have an early round two draft pick. So my thing is this: you're not guaranteed a trade partner. People say, well, you can just get them in round two. How do you know you can get them in round two? Who's to say you're going to be able to trade up into round two? And then, and then why would you, in my opinion, why would you invest in the trade assets it's going to take you to move up from 57 to the top of the second round to get it to or, or to try and hope that you can get him early enough in round two before anybody else takes him? That's going to cost you a pretty penny itself. So why not get the sure thing at 25? It's not much difference when we're talking about picks. guys. It's not much difference. You say, well, you can get a wide receiver. You can get a wide receiver in the second round, too. You can get a corner. You can get a corner in the second round as well. So, But but you're not going to get the best one at second. You know what I'm saying? So why not get the best guy at 25, and then and then you can find other guys and plug them in in rounds two and, and later in the draft? That's my point. Yeah, and the Bills have already tried their hand at that numerous times at the running back position. It has not panned yeah. out. I think Bean has come to the realization, hey, if we want to be good at that position, we're going to have to invest in it. And we could see if that winds up coming to fruition in a couple of days here. But the more we talk about it, the more it, it does it does make sense. You know, it, it definitely does. Now, when you're talking about the Bills, you know, current selections, they're at 25 and then 57. So you're right. Yeah. I have to wait till deep into the second in order to get that done. Um, should that be where they wait in order to go that position? But like you said, is it worth doing that? Because then you're just giving up a second for a guy that you weren't in love with to begin with more, more than likely. Yeah. Speaking of the running back position, Rev, there's, there's guys out there that could be traded for. Saw a wild scenario today that made almost no sense based on the value of it, but I saw a scenario where the Bills could go after Saquon Barkley. We've been talking about that for a while. Mm -hmm. Do you see a potential for the Bills to trade their draft capital for a player this coming up draft? Are they definitely going and using their picks on Thursday? Yeah, um, there's there's not a player that I see that's that they're willing to to part with picks with um, outside of maybe James Bradbury, but that but but then. It just doesn't really make sense when you think it through because he's going to be he's he's going to need a contract, um, and you're going to pay him quite a bit of money. So I mean, you're going to be tied up with two big contracts at the cornerback position with him and Trey White, and then I think he's about I think he's approaching 30 years old if I'm not mistaken, and that's going to cost you a lot of picks. So I I don't I don't think I don't think there's a guy that they that they trade um, for a, a player as, as far as far as I'm concerned. I think they're going to either they're going to stick with their draft picks, and then if they do trade, it's going to be within the draft, but not for a player outside of the draft.